came out 31, I had a question coming out of section 5.5, number 41. And here we were given a function and, try and asked to find all of its zeros, both real and non-real. So if I want to start this, I could start with the rational zero theorem and get the factors of negative 26 and put them in ratio to the factors of 1. And you see me writing out my factors of 26, my factors of 1, and then making those ratios. So this, this could be where I started synthetic division, right? I could try 1 and negative 1, 2 and negative 2, 13 and negative 13, 26 and negative 26. But now that we have technology, it's, I think it's better to just go graph it and get an idea of which zero to start with. So I went over to Desmos. You could go over to your graphing calculator if you wanted. And I graphed this thing. And you can see right here at 2 comma 0, I do have an x-intercept. So what that's going to do is guide me to put 2 here in for synthetic division. Now, in terms of my coefficients, when I have 1, negative 8, 25, and negative 26, that quite literally comes from 1, negative 8, 25, and negative 26. And as I run through this, sure enough, my remainder is 0, so I do have a factor. And since I started, let me scroll back up here, since I started with the cubic, I'm going to start my, my other factor here with the quadratic. So I would have x squared minus 16 plus, not minus 16, excuse me, minus 6x plus 13. And since I had a 2 here, that's where I'm getting the factor of x minus 2. So for me, whenever I run synthetic division and I get down to a quadratic, I'm pretty pumped because that means I'm either going to, I'm, I'm going to try and factor. And if I can't, I'm going to go with the quadratic formula. So when I look at this trinomial, there's nothing that multiplies to 13 but adds to negative 6. Because the only numbers that multiply to 13 are 1 and 13, and they would either add to 14 or subtract to 12. And that's not going to get me to negative 6. So then it's time to use a quadratic formula. And that's where you see me heading here. So I plug in the quadratic formula, keeping in mind a is 1, b is negative 6, and c is 13. And as we run through this, all of a sudden, right, I've got this negative radicand. Because if I think about 36 minus 52, that's technically negative 16. So a little intermediate step here would be 6 plus or minus the square root of negative 16 over 2. But the square root, oops, the square root of negative 16, so this term right here, that's your 4i. So this does become 6 plus or minus 4i over 2, which is where you see me joining back up here. And I simplify that, and I get 3 plus or minus 2i. So the zeros of my equation are 2, 3 plus 2i, and 3 minus 2i. Now, this is the only one that's actually an x-intercept because it's the only real root, right? These guys are not x-intercepts. There's, there's no x-intercept at 3 plus 2i because it's an imaginary number, or technically it's complex. But again, if we go back to the graph, that's why you only saw the one x-intercept. It's just going through at 2, 0, even though we have a cubic polynomial, right? Again, I started out up here with a cubic polynomial. You would think I would have three x-intercepts, but I only have this one because two of them are complex and we can't see them on the xy-coordinate plane. All right, thanks so much, everyone. Bye.